So my name is Jenna Goldsmith. And I'm Nathan Barnes. And we're 5280 Architecture. So about us, we are actually not seniors in senior projects. We are both juniors. Um, it was really the only other level architecture course that we could take, so we decided to take it. Um, we have been taking architecture related courses uh, both years at Grandview. I took Tech Ed 1 and Architectural Design, and Jenna has taken Tech Drawing. And then we will be taking it again next year, um, and we'll hopefully look to expand our designs. So for our project, we decided to make a creative homes type um, development, I guess you could say. We didn't necessarily make a development because we didn't want to make um, four of the same type of houses. And so we went ahead and made four different types of houses. And so I made a craftsman in a modern house and Morgan created a Tuscan in a French. So a lot of the main, originally our project was, was focused on becoming more efficient in Revit. Uh, as we went on through our project, we went away from that. Revit, we found to be an incredibly dated, although it's the industry standard, we found it to be incredibly dated with its graphics, and it's just very inefficient, inefficient to use. So we moved away from that, and we actually got a new program called Home Designer Suite, which has incredible graphics that you'll see later in the presentation. Um, also, another goal of ours was to learn to sketch by hand. Sketching by hand is an incredible skill to have in the field of architecture, and it's just very important, even though most designs are done on CAD programs. And another goal we had was to get away from the cookie cutter designs. So as you can probably see between neighborhoods like Greenfield, The Farm, Tuscany, almost all the houses look exactly the same. And one of our goals in this project was to get away from those designs, so which is why we picked four different types of also, we wanted to create more environmentally friendly houses. Um, LEAD stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. So we wanted to have our houses that were meeting a LEAD standard. Most houses that are built right now do not meet that LEAD standard um, because they were built 20, 30 years ago. And so we were looking to build houses that meet that LEAD standard. And another goal of ours was to create professional and clean looking models. So for our company, company logo, we wanted to go with a design that was clean and simple, but also portrayed a message of like community and environmentally sustainable um, uses. And so we went with the gray brick as just a symbol of architecture and like, construction. And then with the green tree for uh, envir environmental use, sustainability, and Um, so for our professional advisor, we have um, architect Rebecca Alexis. She's also a contractor. She helped us a lot create our um, creating our designs and just making them look professional and realistic. Um, so our support advisors who have been providing us with support, whether it be moral, financial, anything else we might need, were uh, both of my parents, Kendall and Dylan Barnes both of Jenna's parents, uh, Kathy and Charlie Goldsmith, and then our close friend, Jenna Jordan, and then Drake King and Ryan Hostetter. So the, most, the biggest part of my research for my project was trying to figure out what made my French house a French house and what made my Tuscan house a Tuscan house. So for the French house, what I found, thanks to the aid of my advisor, Becky, and from the internet and from other sources, I found that French houses typically have a very steep roof pitch. So as you can see here, they have a, it has a gable roof with a very steep pitch, so it has a steep slope. And then they use a lot of symmetry, a lot of cool colors, and just overall are very symmetrical. Whereas with the Tuscan house, as you can see here, it's, while it's very similar, it's almost completely different. Tuscan houses tend to use a lot of stonework, a lot of arches in their windows and their doors, and they also do not use gable roofs. Um, so this is, as you can see, is a hip roof, so it has uh, no visible wood on the edges. And then another part of my research was looking at interior details um, for both the French and Tuscan houses, which just meant that they were pretty much the same. I meant to include a lot of uh, wrought iron and brick in both the interiors of both houses. Another part of my research was learning how to use Home Designer Suite. 
Uh, we had not originally anticipated to use that program. Uh, we were counting on Revit, however, it was just not meeting our needs with meeting our needs with the with the walk with the walkthroughs. So we uh, moved to that. Um, I really had to learn how to use this program, uh, whether it be from tutorials or just from watching YouTube videos. Uh, but it ended up being much more successful than Revit could have ever been. So just like Morgan, a big chunk of my research was figuring out what defines craftsmen in the modern house. So for craftsmen, as you can see, defined by gable roofs, uh, which is uh, like a lot of peaks and valleys, and you can see there. Um, and then also they have a ton of like on the interior uh, molding. There's a huge the fireplace. The main focus of the craftsman houses is the living area, so um, like a great room. Um, and then also for my modern house, they use a lot of cool colors and natural resources to uh, make a really clean and simplistic design. Um, another part of my research was sustainable materials, um, not just for the exterior, but the interior. So sustainable windows, siding, brick, um, roofing materials, and then also flooring options and um, things such as the different HVAC systems that will help increase that room standard. Um, and then, just like Morgan said, we switched to home design suite half of the year because of our issues with Revit. And learning how to use that program and just manipulate it to make it have our designs be really realistic is part of our research. So another part, another part of our research was looking at LEAD. LEAD, uh, like I said before, it stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. There are four <coughs> ratings you can get for a LEAD house. You can earn certified, gold, silver, or platinum, platinum being the best. Um, our, of course, our goal was to reach a platinum level. We did not achieve that in most of our houses. However, most of them are still a gold level, which is still an incredible uh, amount of points that you could get. Oh, this is the lead rubric. As you can see here, it's based on the point system. So a lot of these we cannot assess because the houses have not been built yet. So we couldn't assess whether it's near bicycle facilities or things like that. But we were able to uh, decide whether or not it had things like interior lighting, daylight, quality views, um, which really helped its lead value. So another huge part of our research is to do a reading. Um, it increases the lead rating of houses by a ton. Um, and what geothermal heating is, is the direct use of geothermal energy from the earth to heat or cool a house instead of the standard HVAC system. Um, so as you can see in this diagram, there uses a, a heat a pump that uh, gets the, geo, the geothermal energy from the earth, which then heats or cools the coils, and then um, sends a liquid into the house that goes into a heat pump and then disperses heat through the house or extracts the heat and puts it back into the earth to cool the house. So I faced a lot of roadblocks during my time building my houses. Um, a major roadblock that caused me a lot of anguish was the roofing for my French style house. On the back side, there is a large bay window. However, originally I had placed it on the corner which meant it was extremely difficult to roof because hips don't work very well in a corner, especially when it's meeting to create this gable. So thanks to the aid of my advisor, I was able to find that just by extending this wall two feet, it, the roof was completely transformed, and now it's actually buildable. Um, another uh, pitfall I faced, I'll, which I'll show in the next image, was my Tuscan entryway. Uh, originally, in my Tuscan entryway, it took up about 25% of the square feet of the house. It was absolutely enormous, but I wanted it to have a great big grand staircase and a line of symmetry because that's what Tuscan houses have. But I really needed to cut down on that square feet, square footage because it was 600 square, 606 square feet, and the house was 2,700 square feet. So as you can, you can probably tell, me that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, so you can see here, this is the floor plan of the French house with the bay window. You can see in the original that the bay window meets at a corner, which meant it was not able to be easily roofed. And then, 
after I fixed it, I barely extended this wall out, and now it was able to be roofed. And then here is the original Tuscan plan. As you can see, this is an enormous waste of space, which I really could not do anything with at the time. So pretty much all I did to fix that is I moved these walls back an enormous, about 20 feet. <laughs> So one of the roadblocks I faced was roofing my modern house. Modern houses typically have a flat roof, but since we live in Colorado, um, having a shed roof is far more, um, it's just a lot better because of the weather that we face. Um, we face drainage, drainage issues with the flat roof, and so I went ahead and put a shed roof on it instead. Um, and then the, all, the other, roadblock my face was with my rooftop deck. That's a kind of a cool feature of modern houses and I wanted to move <coughs> that and with my shed with, without the flat roof it was gonna complicate things. So I just went ahead and built out half of the garage uh, of the garage um, and made it rooftop side. So some roadblocks that we both faced were working with Revit. Revit, like we said before, it's incredibly dated, it's incredibly difficult to use. It's beyond me why it's the industry standard because I, it's awful. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, the way we saw that, we just went down as I just speak, and we have some incredible red bricks now. So, this is our project timeline. We started the project originally in October. Um, from October to November, both of us were mostly working on our floor plans for I was working on the Tuscan house and Jenna was working on the Craftsman house. Uh, she only had, the Craftsman is arranged, so she was only working on her first floor plan and then the basement, which is essentially what we did for the first two months. Because we decided to change uh, CAD programs halfway through our project, we ended up pushing off making the interior uh, walkthroughs for all of our houses until we had become proficient in the designer. Um, from November, we finished up our first houses, which was the craftsman and the French. And then Morgan started her Tuscan house, and I started my modern house. And just like before, we had had to move our walkthroughs and interior design of both of all the houses until after uh, winter break. So, as you can see, the, the points in yellow were things we had to change because of the complications we had with Revit. The, we were planning on doing the laser plans for both houses, however, we weren't able to do that because we wanted to see if home designer had the ability to work with the laser. Unfortunately, we were not able to do that and we had to continue with our Revit plans because the laser is not compatible with home designer 3D. Um, and then the rest of the time throughout January, we worked on our mid-year presentations and we continued to do that in March. So for April, this entire month has just pretty much been catch up and construction. Um, our timeline was very accurate, however, it was a little offset because of the issues with Revit, but we were still able to finish everything on time and we were able to complete our final presentation. So these are 3D renderings of the front and back of my craftsman house. The total square footage is 2,628 square feet, but with the basement, it moves to 5,350. Um, it got a lead, lead rating range of 79 to 88, but either put it in the gold or platinum. And then this is the 3D walk through. You can see from these renderings they're very realistic um, once it shows the house you'll be able to see that the doors have a lot of details the deck has a lot of details and these are just details that we weren't ever able to add on Revit which is why we switched to numbers over three times creating these walkthroughs, like kept, the files kept failing. So this 
This walkthrough, you're only able to see the upstairs of the craftsman because of that. Um, but there was a bolt that just fits. This house got the highest lead rating scale because this was the one that we focused on the most of getting it most um, efficient as we could, installing that geo from uh, the income, and then also the location um, made it have a higher rating. As you can see, well, you're about to see, um, in the great room, it's a vaulted ceiling with a full wall of windows, which uh, gave it that natural lighting all over the house. Um, also, just almost every room has a bunch of windows in it to make sure that there's a ton of natural lighting and, uh, as I said, the location improved its lead scoring. <coughs> In this house, the use of natural materials and um, typically in the modern, I would put uh, concrete floors all over, but it wasn't an option for this. Walk 
So as you can see in the French house, it uses a lot of light colors with, mixed with dark woods. So it has light cabinets with dark woods, which is a very strong French characteristic. bedrooms are connected through a Jack and Jill bathroom, and then they both exit out into the loft area. And this is the master bedroom, which is the upper level of the bay windows, and it has a master bedroom, or a master bathroom, and a walk-in closet. pre-made with the software you got or did you have to model them in the program? Okay, oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Were the models pre-made, like the chairs, the windows and all that in the software or did you get to remodel them in the program? Um, we brought all of the interior design stuff into the program, so we chose all the different features. So what did you have to do to get these laser models to work? Um, so what we had to do, we originally wanted to do them from Home Designer, um, but it wasn't going to work because the school's laser doesn't have Home Designer on it. So we ended up going back and building them in Revit and then transferring them from Revit to the laser. Yep. <laughs> So the geothermal part, does that mean those have to be built on the air geothermal level, or is it some sort of technology that you put into the house? Um, it can, I'm sure it can be installed in the house. Um, you just install it outside, like on the land of the house. Um, and then it's like a huge pump, and then uh, there's a huge tubing system that goes under the ground, and it's your house that goes through the bridge back. So that was a main concern, a very large concern of our project. All of them ended up being very affordable. You know, in the Colorado house market, everything is, all the prices are absolutely ridiculous. But uh, they all ended up being relatively affordable, around $500,000. Just have a question. 